UMass has been at the FBS level for eight years. During that time, they've compiled just 19 wins, never eclipsing more than four wins in a single season. Can this be the year that all changes? Probably not. Welcome back to the Gridiron Expert, the best kept secret in all of college football. Today, bringing you our 2020 UMass Minutemen college football predictions. As always, make sure to continue to like, comment, subscribe, and share our videos, as well as check out everything down in the description below, where you can receive exclusive college football content on our website, thegridironexpert.com, as well as follow all of our social media pages over on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. So for years now, UMass has arguably been the worst team in all of college football. And I think they certainly earned that title last year by going just 1-11 and in their first year under Walt Bell. Their defense was atrocious. The offense could not get anything going. But this is a very young team, guys. Walt Bell's only entering his second year with UMass, his second year ever as a true head coach. The Minutemen just have to give him time. When you look at the offense, guys, they only return five starters from last year. And like many teams that we've discussed throughout the independence, they have a quarterback question. Who is going to start? More than likely, it's going to be junior college transfer Kyle Lindquist, but he did not get the benefit from spring practices. So you do wonder if that will play a factor in Bell's decision for week one. The Minutemen only averaged 19.8 points per game last year and only averaged 293.1 total yards per game last year. Offense could never gain any traction. They've got to improve that if they want to see that win total increase in 2020. But more so than their offense, their defense has to improve. They return also just five starters, but were ranked last in the nation in every defensive category except one. And that was their passing defense was ranked 109th in the country. So throw a party, minute men, if you're happy about that. But they're, they allowed 52.7 points per game. They're worst in the nation. 52.7 points per game they allowed, including 60 points or more in four of their games. You don't win games when that happens, guys. You cannot win games when that happens. And really, their front seven's not that great. The only thing that could bail them out is their secondary, which, again, their passing defense was better than anything else they had last year. They'll be led by Noah Boykin, the transfer from Notre Dame, and Josh Wallace. So Walt Bell has some young talent here. He has some guys that need the playing experience, have a little bit of playing experience, and maybe could see the win total increase maybe a little bit in 2020. The schedule isn't all that bad when you really take a look at it. And they open the season up against UConn. And let me tell you guys, this is going to be that sneaky good Thursday night game to kick off the season. You have 1-11 UMass from 2019 going up against 2-10 UConn from 2019, a defense that allowed 52.7 points per game, going up against a defense that allowed 40.5 points per game. So, man, let me tell you what, if you like offense, this may be the game for you. Last year, UConn defeated the Minutemen 56-35. to So that was also UMass's closest loss of the season last year, coming by just 21 points. When you look at it, though, Randy Edsel owns the coaching edge. He's got way more coaching experience. UConn returns 10 starters on the defensive side of the ball. They themselves have quarterback questions, but have an underrated running game and receiving core. Games on the road, UMass drops this one to the Huskies. We believe they drop a game here to Troy as well. A Troy team that went 5-7 and seven last year with their brand new head coach in Chip Lindsey. And like UConn, like many other teams we'll discuss, we don't know who their quarterback's going to be. They still have a few questions. They don't have that, that starter returning from last year. But what they do have is B.J. Smith and D.K. Billingsley at running back. Kind of a dual threat there with your running backs going up against a UMass defense that allowed 299.1 rushing yards per game. The Trojans will come in to Massachusetts and run all over the Minutemen. They drop to 0-2. They then get to play Albany out of the FCS, guys. This is a winnable game for the Minutemen, but it is not an automatic win. You cannot just give the FBS team the edge over the FCS team, especially when UMass lost to Southern Illinois last year, guys. They were murdered by Southern Illinois, 45-20. to 20. 
And while I don't think that the game against Albany will be decided by 25 points, I do believe that Albany wins this game. I believe they come in and steal the win over the Minutemen. This is a team that went 9-5 and five last year, 6-2 and two within their conference, and they return their quarterback, one of the best in the FCS, and Jeff Undercuffle. So, Undercuffler, excuse me. So, he returns this year for Albany, and that's going to be huge considering that UMass's defense is, well, terrible. They then go on the road to take on App State. Automatic loss here. They're led by a great quarterback in Zach Thomas, an offense that returns 10 starters. Forget they've got a brand new head coach. App State still the team to beat within the Sun Belt. And this is another one of those games where if UMass doesn't write in the ship, that App State could put up maybe 60 points or more in this game because their offense is going to be deadly yet again. So UMass, 0-4 on the season. Albany loss is the one that's going to be stinging the most. They go on the road to New Mexico, a team that went 2-10 last year, a team that was not very good at all offensively nor defensively. As a matter of fact, New Mexico had the 130th ranked passing defense in the country. They were last in the country when it came to their passing defense. So when you look at UMass, you look at their relatively young and somewhat experienced wide receiver core. If Kyle Lindquist or whoever is under center can take some steps forward, especially after four games, maybe they can go on the road and beat the Lobos. But the one thing that I like about New Mexico is they now have a little bit of talent to run an RPO offense under new head coach Danny Gonzalez. But outside of that, they get Rocky Long, the former head coach at San Diego State. He is now their defensive coordinator. And while I don't think that's going to magically make New Mexico bowl contenders, I do think that's a, that's a cont contribution, and in addition to that staff, that's very, very underrated. New Mexico, at home, gets the win over the Minutemen. We have them losing to Temple, Anthony Russo, and an Owls team that won eight games last year. They are now entering year two under head coach Rod Carey. They are, once again, the kind of sneaker team and the American Athletic Conference should win at least seven games again this year, especially with an offense that has eight starters coming back. So they fall to the Owls here, a very difficult team, usually a strong defensive team as well. And then set up the big one, the big game against Akron, potentially the game of the year. This was UMass's lone win in 2019, guys. UMass defeated the Zips by just eight points, 37-29. to Akron ended up going 0-12. UMass ended up going 1-11. This game on October 17th at Akron could potentially decide who finishes the year at 0-12 because neither team is going to have that much talent. And you look at this, guys. It's beautiful. UMass was last in three of the four major defensive categories, as we mentioned. Akron was last in the country in three of the four major offensive categories, averaging just 10.5 points per game and an abysmal 47.6 rushing yards per game. So one of the worst defenses going up against one of the worst offenses. Something's got to give here. What's it going to be? And I think something gives in favor of the Akron Zips. Home field advantage, Tom Arth entering year two, Cato Nelson back at quarterback a year under his belt, and six returning starters on defense. You know, defense, ironically, was not last in the country last year. That went to UMass. So I think a little bit of revenge on Akron's mind. It's entirely embarrassing and humiliating to go 0-12. Akron wants to put a win in the column this year. I think they get it at home. UMass still searching for their first win over halfway through the season here. They don't get it against Florida International, a team they lost to 44 to nothing last year. They fell to the Panthers. Yes, they lose James Morgan, but their defense, uh, led by Butch Davis, is going to be strong yet again. This is the Florida International team that should flirt with bowl eligibility. But they do fall to the Panthers. They get their bye week. They play New Mexico State, a team that was absolutely terrible last year as well. Many of the independents, guys, not too hot. UMass, UConn, uh, New Mexico State, all these guys ranking around the same area when it comes to offense and defense. You look at the Aggies here. This is a very winnable game for the Minutemen. Coming off a week of rest. An Aggies team that loses their quarterback in Josh Adkins. They lose their top two rushers. But the thing that I like the most for New Mexico State is not their offense by any means, but the fact they return seven defensively, uh, and, their, and their front seven should be relatively strong by their standards. Yes, their defense was horrible. Yes, they were in many categories ranked 129th, while UMass ranked 130th. But I think Doug Martin has his squad just a little bit better. They improved ever so slightly from that 2-10 record, and New Mexico State travels out east, 
Snags a win over the Minutemen. They drop that one, of course lose to Auburn, and then we have them rounding out the year where they lost to Army and they lost to Liberty. An Army team they fell to 63-7 to last year. A Liberty team that does have to replace Buckshot Calvert at quarterback, that does have to replace Antonio Gandy-Golden at wide receiver, but brings in Malik Willis, the Auburn transfer, who's going to be the perfect fit for Hugh Freeze's RPO offense that he wants to run. Not to mention Liberty also defeated UMass 63-21 to last year. So with all that being said, we have the Minutemen guys going 0-12. And, and they very well could be the only team in the FBS to do just that. Akron was 0-12 last year. UMass stole the win from them. We have Akron stealing the win from them this year, while UMass will be the team that goes 0-12 in college football. When you look at their schedule, guys, if you want to say, please don't let them go 0-12, if you have any UMass faithful out there, is there any way they can avoid this? Most winnable games, guys, maybe you're coming against Albany, maybe coming against Akron, and I would say probably New Mexico State as well. Those are probably the three games that UMass has the best chance of winning. But again, this is a very, very young team. And of course, going 1-23 over two years is not ideal for Walt Bell. They've got a lot of talent that they've got to start bringing in in their recruiting classes. This is a team that you just have to give time. You have to be patient with. They haven't done much in eight years, now entering nine years of FBS football. But in time, whenever that may be, Walt Bell or whoever that may be will get the Minutemen to the postseason and get them to be so somewhat relevant within the world of college football. So guys, thank you so much for watching us here at the Gridiron Expert, the UMass Minutemen we have going 0-12 in college football this year. 0-12, no conference games, but 0-12 as an independent. Make sure to continue to like, comment, subscribe, and share our videos, as well as follow us on all of our social media pages, and check out everything on our website, thegridironexpert.com. Tons of exclusive content on all of those places that I can promise you do not want to miss. And once again, as always, thank you so much for watching, and we will see you next time right here on The Gridiron Expert. Music